I highlight the manner in which government secrecy has expanded dramatically since 9-11, both in the United States and in Europe, and its various facets, and argue that we need to take the imperatives of government secrecy seriously. And why consider both the United States and the European Union, as I do this evening? Well, as Commissioner Malmström, Commissioner for Home Affairs, pointed out, for the new internal security strategy, the EU, and I quote, took inspiration from the comprehensive approach of the US Homeland Security Strategy. According to some, since 9-11, America has been treated as the 28th member of the EU. It enjoys, for example, presence in Europol and Eurojust, and has signed a range of international agreements with the EU on internal security matters. And Wolfgang Straubel, as German Interior Minister, put forward the idea of a Euro-Atlantic area of internal security some years ago. The laws that penalize the release of classified information in principle only apply to government officials like NASA, <coughs> although there are some provisions of the U.S. Espionage Act from 1917 that might apply more broadly to those who gather, transmit, or lose defense information. In order to take away any ambiguity in this regard, the so-called SHIELD Bill was recently introduced in both houses of the U.S. Congress. Now, SHIELD stands for Securing Human Intelligence and Enforcing Lawful Dissemination. It aims to amend the Espionage Act from 1917 so as to be able to criminally prosecute those who publish leaked classified information or facilitate its publication. <coughs> and this is a typical knee-jerk reaction by an executive power to leaking, an attempt to shore up secrecy even more. If adopted, it could have huge implications for constitutional rights and freedoms in the United States, and it's therefore obviously controversial. An organization like WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks relies primarily on what's called user-generated content, in other words, leakers. The novelty lies both in the amount of information digitally made available, the total was something like two, over 250,000 documents downloaded onto a number, of, one assumes that it was at least a number of USB sticks, it applies in a geographically unrestricted manner and has the potential for what can be termed analytical transparency. Now, analytical transparency was put into practice with the strategy of WikiLeaks linking up with four classical news organizations. You know of that, I'm sure. Le Monde, El Pai, The Guardian, shared it with the New York Times and the Spiegel. WikiLeaks can, in this context, be understood as an example of a new way of challenging government power in the information age by getting previously hidden information with possible evidence of abuse of power out into the open in a largely unstoppable and global fashion. One of the best responses to the dilemma of ensuring that secrecy is democratic is to make certain that there is proper public discussion of the rules that determine when the secrets shall be. So secrecy, this is the idea that secrecy is justifiable only if it's actually justified in a process that it itself is not secret. secret. First order secrecy in a process or about a specific policy requires second order publicity. And second order publicity is about the decision to make the process or policy secret. So what is termed second order publicity is key to developing a system of checks and balances in a democratic political system. At the end of the day, executive power must not abuse its privileged position, and the other actors in a political system must ensure that they are equipped to provide the requisite countervailing powers. They can only do so if the deep secrets are unknown unknowns are moved into shallower waters where some light can penetrate. In my view, this is a lesson from WikiLeaks. Make the system of government secrecy more limited and shallower and ultimately more legitimate. This is a more lasting legacy for the information age rather than a knee-jerk reaction that seeks temporary responses in a hardening and widening of criminal law sanctions against moles and their intermediate.